Runaway leaders. Well, draw the United haven't won since April, and up here against the champion select. Dooley, nice little ball in to Ellis. Couldn't quite pull it back. City going close. Connor Ellis getting his chance up front in the absence of Shawnee Maguire, who's of course gone to Preston. Carl Shepard, nice turn. Saved by McGuinness. Draw to scramble it away. Shepard, he'll be the main man up front. Last draw of the United getting some passes together. Jack Bailey, Chris Mulhall doing well. The layoff to Tommy Byrne, not too far away. Best we've seen from Pete Mahan's side. Byrne going close. Stephen Beatty. Bursting forward, tracked all the way by Jake Highland. Corner to City. John Caulfield taking nothing for granted. In comes the corner. Bennett wins it in the air. Pinball in the draw to penalty area. It came off the post, but it stayed out. Shepard got a touch. Garoud Morrissey, fine ball. Shepard driving it in. Ellis is there, it's off the post again. Well, City going close and Drogheda's defence living a charmed life. Beatty again. Nice little pullback to Shepard. Good turn. McGuinness gets it at the second attempt. Well, on the balance of play, Cork City should be well ahead. But Drogheda are plucky. Nulty with the long ball. Ellis flicks it on. Oh, the mistake by Shane Elworthy. Dooley's behind, and Dooley has got the crucial goal. 55 minutes on the clock. Dunn and Connor Kane couldn't keep it out. And there's going to be a free kick here. Alan Bennett giving it away. Right on the edge of the area. Looked like he made an honest effort to go for that. Good pace on it and well saved by McNulty. Who was right down the line of this free kick. Easy save in the end. Flick on by Akil Campion. Dooley has done well. And it's Dooley and the shot from Buckley and it's scrambled behind. Pete Mahan's side hanging on, just a goal behind, still a chance for Drogheda United. Lovely link-up play by Tommy Byrne. Bennett squeezes it away. Back in it goes from Kane. Mulhall, nice turn, another of the new signings, running into the challenge of McCormack. Referee is non-plussed, no penalty. Well, not the best of angles to see it here, but it certainly looked like McCormick didn't play the ball. Kieran Sadler on the outside. Good deep cross towards Kyohan. Dooley and Kyohan. And again, the woodwork denying Cork City. Morrissey's follow-up over the bar. Well, I think that's the third time Cork City have hit the woodwork tonight. Time running out for United. Referee has the whistle at his lips. It's just a goal between the sides, top and bottom. Draw to United without a win since April. Champions elect Cork City bouncing back after their first defeat of the season. It's going to be interesting now to see what's going to happen at the end, but we have to keep going. We've eight games left. We owe it to ourselves, we owe it to the fans, we owe it to other teams in the league that we do our business right, and if we can play like we did tonight and last week, and maybe the win is not too far away. Obviously we had a lot of chances we didn't take, but, but right to the end, Drogheda were really dangerous, and uh, you know they had a few scares, and um, you know they were playing for their manager, Pete Mann, who's a fantastic manager. So 
I was well aware that it would be right to the end tonight and we needed to dig in and um, we did and a uh, great three points for us and um, as we said uh, all week that um, we were refocused tonight and we needed effort for the game. Yes, so Cork City taking the three points against Drogheda United. But uh, Richie, John made an interesting point there that uh, Drogheda United were dangerous right to the end. And we know that they're, they're playing for Pete Mahan at the moment. But also, I suppose, when you're at the bottom, things don't go your way. We know that old cliche. And that was the case. I mean, there was a penalty mm. appeal, and we're going to have a look at it now. Well, there are, a lot of things, yeah, there are a lot of things not going Drogheda United's way at the moment. You're right. I mean, Cork had most of the ball, most of the, the chances. Steve McGuinness had a busy night in goal. But you'll forget all about that if you're... Pete McMahon or you're looking at it from a Drogheda point of view I think this incident they have a right to feel aggrieved this is another angle of it Chris Mulhall is taken down bundled down in the box by McCormick the referee had a really really good view no one was in his way the Drogheda players all appealed 87 minutes a penalty they could have got a point so absolutely they'd be annoyed with that but it was a fair result yeah, I mean, as, as they said also in the interviews, there were plenty of mm. chances that Cork City had and probably should have won by more. But Dan, let's talk about Drogheda United for the moment. I mean, it looks as though they're slightly could have drifted now of the others, but there still are enough games left to get out of trouble. But do you think they have the squad to try and get out of trouble? Um, it's hard, hard to see them getting out of trouble, to be honest, Pete. I think uh, if, you, if you look at it with three teams going down, they, they, look, they look probably a little bit too far away. And t to be honest, I just don't think they've got the goals in them to stay up. I think if you look at the teams around them, the Galways uh, and Pats, they seem to have a lot more goals. And when you're down there, you need the goals. Like you said, the penalty was a big mm -hmm. talking point. That might have, that gives them a great chance of scoring a goal. And that, that gets them a draw, that might push them on. But they don't look like they're going to score many goals from, from open play. And it's going to be difficult. But like you said, the, they'll go to the end. Yeah. You'd imagine morale is fairly low, and even in your intro, you said, you know, if, when Pete's the manager, you, that the players are still going to fight. And we saw that in that game against Cork, to give them credit. I know this is a fairly low bar to, to praise them simply for fighting and for keeping going, but it's very difficult to look for other reasons to praise the Strata team. They concede an average two league goals a game, they're the lowest scorers. Um, they've brought in Dave Mulcahy, which I think is an interesting signing. He's experienced, we know what he can do. He'll organise, he'll lead that, those group of players. He's, he's not the youngest of players, but I think the next league game is key. I would agree with that. I, I can't see Drogheda getting out of this, but their next game is a uh, cup game against Evergreen. That might boost morale a little bit if they win it, and then they go to Bray. If I could pick my next fixture, it would be against Bray Wanderers in the Carlisle grounds, given everything that's happened there. If they're to win that, they have a hope. If they don't, forget about it. Yeah, but uh, the fight will continue, but it's mm. going to be a struggle. I think that's what everybody agrees at this stage. Uh, let's talk about Cork City. And first of all, in Sean Maguire's absence, somebody needs to step up to the plate to mm. sort of, uh, I suppose, boost the goal tally. And Stephen Dooley has been doing that on a regular basis. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's got a lot of goals. He's been very dangerous. It's, uh, it's uh, a good finish from the lad. I think the keeper and the defenders have made it very easy for himself. But like I say, I think uh, He's praised the goals that Shawnee Maguire scored uh, this season, Peter, but I, I go back to the de defence, the back four, the goalkeeper. They've only conceded 12 goals. They've won games 1-0 when they've needed to get, win one game, and that's going to win the league. I think it's even more impressive. I think the centre-halves that they played, Robbie Williams and Benno at the centre-back, that was probably their sixth or seventh different combination. And you look back over the, over the years of teams that have won the league, uh, they've had the same back four probably every single game, so it's more impressive, even more impressive yeah. that they've been able to change that round. And great credit to, to the management uh, of Cork City that, that they, well, whoever's playing mm -hmm. at the back four, they're able to keep these clean sheets, yeah. which gives them every opportunity of winning, winning the matches. Yeah, it's built on a very solid defensive platform, that is for sure. And Richie, I suppose it'll be easy in a way to almost uh, overlook this Cork achievement because they've been nailed on for the title now for quite a few weeks, but we shouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, I think that's. That's probably what will happen in certain quarters because probably about six or eight weeks ago we all decided the Cork were going to win the league because of the start that they, that they uh, or the results and the goals and everything else. But I think it's worth stressing again and again just how phenomenal their achievement this season is. The start in the run of games that they've had to only get to that, get this point and only lose one. Yes, they have to deal with now with a couple of players who have left, but they will go on and win the league, um, which huge credit to them. I think it's great yeah. credit. They've got a great chance to go and do a treble, which not many teams get a chance to do. So, from a Cork person, let's <laughs> hope that happens. Already talking themselves <laughs> up. <laughs> not just happy with the yeah. league. Well, that's the, that's the right attitude, Dan, but it really has been a great season and it certainly won't be overlooked or underestimated here on Soccer Republic. Now, Dundalk were prolific 